Hello, my name is Michelle Angelo Rocha, and I'm a PhD student in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies at the University of South Florida. And today I'm here with Dr. Sally Capbel Gaman, and she's the author of the chapter Follow the Headlights on Comics Based Data Analysis, part of the book Analyzing and Interpreting Qualitative Research after the interview that's in production right now with Sage. Dr. Capbel Gaman is an anthropologist, writer, performance, and visual artist, and advocate for gender diverse children and young people. Her research interests include the anthropology of childhood, arts-based qualitative and ethnographic research methods, and gender studies. She is the principal investigator of the Gender Moxie Project. This project was funded by the Spencer Foundation, and it focuses on understanding transgender and other gender diverse children in children's experiences and resiliences through an interdisciplinary and art-informed lens. She also served as editor of the Anthropology and Education Quarterly. She is also currently as an editor of Genesee Young People Text Cultures. And Dr. Kapabel Gaman was born and grew up in North, Northern ja 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 Japan, she spent every summer on her life in the public library near her grandparents' house in, in Jackson, Mississippi, and graduated from Penahau School in Hon Honolulu, Hawaii. She's a professor of child and family studies at the University of Massachusetts, Armenst. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me today, Dr. Thank you for Kavikana. having me on the recording. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm really, I really love uh, your, your work. And could you talk a little bit about, could you share a little bit about your chapter in the book? Sure. Um, this is a chapter on data analysis, which is, something that until recently, I don't think a lot of people wrote about. I think that when I was in my PhD program, data analysis was something that was sort of shrouded in mystery. Like we spent a lot of time talking about how to collect data and how to write about it. But the, the whole analysis was like this black box, like what do people do? So um, it's a chapter of how you go from having data to having something to say about your data. And the chapter focuses on my work doing arts-based data analysis, which is a little, murky, um, a little, maybe a little strange, uh, maybe not what people are used to because it is so highly intuitive and it employs the techniques um, and tools from the arts to analyze data, which is a little different. And in case people haven't seen the chapter yet, it is um, a comic strip because that's uh, that's how I, I write. Um, it's drawings and hand lettered words. And um, that's what I use to talk about the comics based, arts based um, data analytic process. I just love your, well, your chapter because it's so unique. Could you talk, talk a little bit more how, uh, what is inspire you and, uh, and what your, your chapter is, can contribute to the qualitative analysis? Sure, um, I have, this is one of lots of comics-based works that I've done. I've written four books and I've published a lot of articles and I also worked as a newspaper cartoonist. I've done a lot of things. I have a website people can look at, um, sallycampbellgallman.com. Um, for some of that work. And I was told very early in my career when I was a junior, junior, junior faculty member, that if I wanted to ever be taken seriously, I should stop drawing. Really? Yes, because it, my, my little cute drawings and books were not going to get me tenure. Um, and I needed to show I was a real scholar. So, I, you know, I, I obviously did not listen to that. Um, and now I have a lot of junior colleagues and I have graduate students who want to do this work. And in order to um, do this work, they need encouragement and they need support. And they also need people to be doing it to point and say that those people do that work. And so um, I can do it too, because there's a precedent for a journal publication of this, this kind of work. So when um, when I made full professor, I decided I wasn't going to do any more what we call in the, in the industry called straight work, right? I was going to draw everything um, for that, for political and professional reasons. And also because that's how I think and it's how I communicate. And I do believe in arts-based work at its uh, place in the academy. And that's a way I can, I can foreground that. Um, writing the chapter was, it's very hard <laughs> because to sit down and write something in Word, if you make a mistake, you just delete and you fix it. If you do something, make a mistake like this, you have to redraw the whole thing. Oh um, so it's, and it takes so long to do the hand lettering. So it's really an intensive labor of love and you come out of it, um, I think you come out of it transformed 
because of the amount of sweat that goes into producing something, especially something as big as this. This was, I think, 18, 19 panels. And it took me, you know, it's about 15 hours to do one panel. And that's independent of actually writing it and figuring out what's going to, the, the actual content of what's going to go in there. So, um, yeah, so that's, that was the impetus behind the, the piece. So uh, this was the most challenge that you faced during the process of writing a chapter? I think this was the hardest because I was trying to, I mean, anytime you're talking about data analysis, it's difficult because it's very individualized and it's very intuitive and it's very, um, people, everybody has their own thing and trying to frame how you do that in a way that is, uh, reflects its systematic principle of orderly nature is hard. So writing anything about data analysis is hard. Drawing this was difficult, drawing and writing it because there was so much to get across and when you're doing arts-based work, you're not just trading in words, although those take a very long time because you have to do the little tiny hand lettering, but also figuring out what are the, what are the images? What, what are the things that are gonna drive this piece? And that's a lot of time thinking and sketching and reflecting and what, because they have to all count, right? You only have so much space. So what are the metaphors that are gonna be in this piece? How are you going to reflect these ideas? Because the images have to speak also. They're not just decoration there part of the conversation. Um, so that took a very long time just to figure out how was I going to reflect this. And I was lucky enough um, to be able to draw on some work from a friend and longtime colleague, Marcus Weaver Hightower and his colleagues. Um, he does something called comics-based research, which is a great term that I wish was around 20 years ago, <laughs> but now it is. And um, I, I love that because it, as a cartoonist, we're in, I'm in a separate class um, within the fine arts. Um, and our methods in, in comics are a little different than in you know straight illustration. So it was great to be able to frame it that way. So I really was able to find some great material, but it was a real labor of love putting it together. I can't wait so people have access to your chapter and they can read it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so thank you so much for coming talk to me today. Of course, and, of course. and soon your chapter is gonna be uh, available to, to everybody who wants to read it. I'm really excited about it. I'm eager to teach with it. <laughs> I teach a class in arts-based research and I really need the chapter so I can, I can teach with it because it's going to be great. And the whole book obviously is full of fantastic stuff and I'm going to learn a lot from, uh, from reading it. So anyway, but that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.